While buying a home or an apartment can be a deeply personal experience, in most cases we find that when somebody decides to buy a home or an apartment, they usually find a lot of approved looks and approves from their elders and seniors in the family. It's an easy decision to make. It's what everybody wants to do, likes to do. In fact, it's easy to do. Especially if you're somebody in your 20s and 30s who is going on their career graph at some point in the future, planning to start your family. You're expected to buy an apartment. That's the thing to do. But does it suit everybody? Last week, I had a visit from Arun, a client of mine. Arun is a senior techie working in an IT firm. He is in his late 20s. Arun met me and confided that he was on the verge of getting married. He is currently staying with his family. And he said, as soon as I said yes to the girl, both my parents and the girl's parents started asking me if I thought about investing in her property. He was very confused. And the reasons are very simple. Since he works in a high-tech domain, he wanted to have the freedom to move around and work with the best companies that offered the best experience. Be it in Chennai, be it in Delhi, be it in New York. He wanted to have the flexibility to move around. Arun is also an avid mountaineer. There are times when he likes to take off for three months and does these big treks across these big mountains. He wants to have the freedom of taking a sabbatical from his work, not having to worry too much. Third, he didn't want to be constrained to buy something today, which he will regret later. He didn't want to buy something too big that he can't afford today, but what he can afford today, he felt he may not actually need it in the future. With all these dilemmas, he came to me with a simple question. Should I buy an apartment or rent an apartment? That's really the question Arun asked. And towards that, I did some workings for him. And that's what we're going to discuss today in this episode. Let's dive deeper and look at what the numbers say on this. As per the numbers discussed by Arun, we looked at an apartment of something around 1,500 square feet in a suburb. Not in the prime locality, but not too much outside the city either. So the cost was working to about 5,333 rupees per square feet. So the total cost of the apartment was about 80 lakhs. Now Arun, through his uh, existing job, had a savings of about 20 lakhs. So he would have taken a loan worth 75% of the property value, which is 60 lakhs. The current loan interest rate we had assumed at about 9.5%. The loan tenure we had assumed to be 20 years. And the income tax bracket that Arun currently is on a 30% bracket. So these are the basic assumptions with which we had got into this checking whether uh, renting the apartment is better or buying the apartment is better. Now when we did the numbers for buying the apartment, this is how the value flew. Based on the calculations, for a 60 lakh loan at 9.5% interest rate over a 20 year period, the EMI works out to 55,928 rupees every month. The total interest paid over a 20 year period would work out about 74 lakhs and the total repayment principal and the interest combined put together is about 1.34 crores on a property that's about 80 lakhs worth. If we assume that since he's on the 30% bracket, he would get the benefit of staying in that apartment, assuming he stayed for 20 years in that apartment. 1,50,000 rupees is the interest exemption that's provided for him. And 30% on 1,50,000 is 50,000. So the 50,000 rupees he saves out of taking the loan, then that works out for 20 years, a handsome sum of 10 lakhs. If he had invested this 10 lakhs diligently every year, he would have a corpus at the end of 20 years worth about 43 lakhs. This is under the assumption that the investment would yield him about 13% return. Now, how do we get this 13% return? We have assumed that we've looked at the stock market's actual return between 1st January 2004 
to 1st January 2024. The exact returns that stock market, the Indian Sensex gave during this period was 13.54. 13.54 is the actual return that Sensex gave during the period of this 20 last years. And it's a fair assessment for us to believe that this is the same return or around the same return that someone can expect over the next 20 years. Although we cannot predict or project for reality purposes, this is a fair way of looking at the future. Based on this, the apartment value we have assumed to grow at a 5% rate of appreciation. We'd looked at some of the apartments that happened over the last 20 years in the OMR region in Chennai. And this is what most people gave us the rate and this is what Arun confirmed as the rate of appreciation that's happened over the last 20 years. So apartments have appreciated at a rate of 5% on OMR side. So we use the same argument of 5%. So an 80 lakh apartment over a 20 year period reaches out to about 2 crores at 5% every year. Plus the tax saved amount of 43 means that the terminal value of that property at the end of 20 years, which he has invested 80 lakhs, is about 2.55 crores. So that's the value that he gets if he bought the apartment. Let's look at the option if he had rented the apartment. If he had rented the apartment, then he would have an immediate outgo of 30,000 rupees every month. That's the rental for a similar size apartment that happens in a similar locality. He would have to upfront fork out 10 months of this 30,000, which is 3 lakhs as a rental advance, rental deposit to the person. And we also assumed that the building maintenance would come up to 10% of the rental value, which is 3,000 rupees. So he'll also have to incur a building maintenance charge of 3,000 rupees every month. Now, both the rental and the building maintenance, we've assumed to go up by 10% every three years. That's also the assumption. Based on this calculation, the overall outflow that Arun will have with all the increases in rentals over a 20 year period is assumed to be 1.05 crores. So he'll actually incur 1.05 crores just staying in somebody else's house, not his own. But on the contrary, he will have out of the 20 lakhs that he has as savings, only 3 lakhs is gone towards rental deposit. So he'll have 17 lakhs to deploy in some investment. He will also have a monthly investment capability, which is 55,000, which was the earlier EMI figure, minus 30,000. So he will have 22,000 to be done on a month-on-month -month basis as an investment. At the rate of return of 13.54, like I mentioned, which is the 20-year track record of investment, this corpus works out to 5 crore 30 lakhs for Arun. Less the amount of rentals money that he has paid, which is 1.05 crores. The net amount available to him is about 4.25 crores. As compared to buying an apartment and having an apartment terminal value of 2.55 crores, in this current argument of staying in a rented place, the amount that he saved is being deployed into, say, an SIP that delivers returns exactly as Sensex had done in the past 20 years. If that were the assumption, he'd be sitting on a corpus of 4.25 crores, roughly about 65% higher than buying your own property. I want to take a moment to say there are a few things one needs to observe. One is the recent past stock markets have been doing exceptionally well. So this data could be a little bit exaggerated on this account. Therefore, one needs to kind of moderate this from that perspective. Second, we have assumed that property appreciation is 5% based on what we have heard from people. There is no statistics, overall statistics to give us data on this. That said, the purpose of this exercise is, as in the case of Arun, we would like to make a more scientific basis of whether one needs to buy an apartment or rent an apartment. We do believe that buying a home for to raise your family is an emotional decision. But 
if there are financial considerations that one needs to go, I think this is a very, very good framework for somebody to use to evaluate if whether they should buy a property or rent a property.